positive, about eliminating the negative, accentuating the positive. I always plucked a thristic and planted a flower. I always plucked a thistle and planted a flower where I thought a flower would grow. This is a quote by Abram Lincoln. One chilly January day 22 years ago, I sat in an examining room waiting for the results of yet another biopsy. Six months earlier, at the age of, 30, at the age of 38, I had been diagnosed with breast cancer and had a, mes a mastectomy and reconstruction. But a suspicious rash had appeared on my reconstructed breast and I was waiting to hear the results of the lab report. My doctor entered the room with a look of concern. Georgia, he said, I'm sorry, but it's a recurrence of breast cancer. My head started to spin and I felt that familiar awful ache in, my, in the pit of my stomach. But my feelings were not exactly like the first time I was told I had cancer. There was no shock. There was no numbness. There was no denying what was happening. It was serious and I knew it. Although I can't recall everything the surgeon said that day. I do remember what happened when he left the room. His nurse, Vicky, who was all who was only a few years younger and I, than I was, looked over at me with deep concern. My eyes met hers and I burst into tears. I don't want to die. My son is only nine years old, I sobbed. I want to live to see him graduate from high school. I started rocking back and forth and kept repeating. I just want to see my son graduate from high school. Vicky didn't tell me I would see my son Kyle graduate. She didn't tell me I wouldn't. She listened, held me, held me tightly and handed me one tissue after another. I know how long I stayed in the examination room, but I do know, I don't know how long I stayed in the examining room, but I do know that she stayed with me and ate with me. During the days that followed, I discovered I had a slim chance of being alive in 10 years. My only hope for long-term survival was chemotherapy, radiation, and a bone marrow transplant. I had always, I had all those treatments when they were complete. My cancer was in remission, was in remission, but I was a mere shell of a person. As Kyle said years later, Mom, you were a ghost in a shell. Though my experience with cancer, I learned the powerful impact of one caring person, whether that person is a doctor assistant, like Vicki, a counselor, a friend, or a relative. It's one person who can make a positive difference. The harsh reality is that I also became painfully aware that some people are, some people are not positive and life-giving. Rather, their negative and thoughtless interactions are draining and in some cases toxic. For example, one day a friend took me to chemotherapy treatment. For the 50 minutes drive, for the 50 minute drive, she told me one painful story after another about people who had faced cancer. At one point, I asked, "Can we talk about something besides cancer?" She did for five minutes, and then the the litany began again. After previous treatments, I had never gotten sick. After that treatment, I was sick. I was sick for two days. I learned the hard way that I needed to protect myself as much as possible from contact with a kind of negative or thoughtless person. At the very least, I had to distance myself from certain people. And acquire, and acquire the ability to say no. This was especially difficult because I had been taught to be kind to everyone. I had never recognized the importance of, settling, of setting clear boundaries with some people. I had never realized that just like the weeds in the garden robbed the flowers of vital moisture, nutrients, and sunlight, so too the weeds in my life were robbing me of the vital energy I needed to fight cancer and heal. I cannot afford to allow interactions with negative people to steal the few resources I had left. In a perfect world, everyone gathers around cancer survivors and supports them in the way they need to be supported. Since this is a perfect world, I needed to make two changes. I needed to eliminate the negative as much as possible and then accurate the positive. I mean, accentuate the positive. Like the flowers in my garden turn toward the sun, I decided to focus on the loving, beautiful connections in my life. I chose to truly appreciate and treasure pe the people who care for me and dot it on me. I know I would not be here today without all the support I received. 17 years later, I called Vicky, the nurse, and asked her, and asked to meet with her. Vicky, I said when we met, I want to thank you again. You have no idea of the impact the, that your, warmth and, com that your warm warmth and compassion made in my life. Tears of gratitude streamed down my cheeks. She looked at me and shook, my, and shook her head in amazement. You just never know, do you? I had no idea what that meant to you that day. Like Vicky, many people give us a hug, make an affirming comment or lend a helping hand and never think about it again. They don't realize that it makes all the difference to us as cancer survivors when we sometimes wonder how we'll make it through another day. It's that positive nurturing connection, the heart-to-heart -heart connection that not only will con counteract all those sterile needles or machines we have to face, but we continue, <laughs> but will continue to harm our hearts years later, even on the chilliest of winter days. Um, negative situations that people can be just as cancers in your life, you know, just treated as those, you know, treated as you're a cancer survival survivor to those negative or toxic people's or toxic people that used to be 
in your life and it really feels good to kind of detach from those type of people it feels good to detach away from those type of situations you know um i had this conversation i had a conversation with my son's dad um yesterday and we was talking about how you know it just brought up a lot of negativity but at the same time i felt like i needed to vent about it you know, it was good. To, it was good moments. You know, we was communicating about the good things and communicating about the bad things. More so bad things because I these is this is like stuff that I wouldn't normally say, but I had that opportunity to speak out about it, and I told him about how I felt. Um, although I was past it, it's always there because um, I never actually addressed how I felt to that specific person. Um, so I was just speaking about how I don't have support and anytime anybody else, you know, reach out for support, they get that support, you know, without any hesitation. But when it comes to me, it seems like when I want that support, um, either told no, I got to do it on my own and this and that. And he was talking about how, well, you know, this is where that's what makes you strong and this and that. And I'm like, just because I'm strong doesn't mean I'm not hurting. You know, I, I was like, if I get the chance, I would love to just ask why. You know, why don't I get that support? Why am I always told no when I really need it? You know, and it's easy to say yes to everybody else, but it's not so easy to say yes to me. If yes, I mean, if you say yes at all. And he was just like, like I said, he was like, it makes you stronger. And that's where you just turn to God. And I'm like, yes, you can turn to God. And you can pray to God. And God can make that, you know, God can be that um, replacement of those type of people and that's how I felt at the time I'm like God is I feel like God is only me trying to replace you know what I actually feel you know putting God in a position to where I really want to lean on this person but I can't lean on this person so therefore you know I turn to God with it with all my troubles but there's so many there's only so much I can hold in you know it's like what's the root you know, you go to God. I was like, I want to go to God where I don't have so much trouble inside of me. You know, I want it to be about me and my connection with God, my relationship with God. But then I don't want to make it about, you know, just because I don't have this person in my life, I'm turning to God because I don't have that person in my life. I don't want it to be about that. And I feel like this is something I'm never going to be actually be able to deal with. You know, this is something I always got to hold in. And this is something that always, you know, troubles me and bothers me because I don't have that why. You know, why am I always the one put in a position to have to fight harder than anybody else? You know, when I reach out and I say I need help, why am that I'm that person that gets smacked on my hand? No, every time. But when somebody else needs help, it's just like that. Instantly, you do it. Instantly, they get that help. You know, without a doubt. But in my situation... I have to figure it out, you know, and then we was talking about how he was like, well, you should be grateful of where you're at. You should be grateful that you got a head over your shoulders. A lot of people don't have that or this. And I'm like, well, I have no other choice because I'm not when if everything falls, I have to be right there to pick it up. Ain't nobody picking nothing up for me. You know, if I lose everything right now, I have to be down there to, you know, hold everything up. I have to be down there to catch it if I can. I'm, I have to always be on guard because it's only me. I can't, this is a risk. I said I'm in a riskful situation. I can't be humble. I can't be grateful. I can't just rest. Because if I lose something or if I fail, no one is there to support me. I am my own support. Nobody is there for me. Nobody. You know how much energy that takes? You know how hard that is? You know? How hard it is. How draining it is. How exhausting it is to just be right there with everything on your shoulders. And if anything falls, you have to be there for yourself. Be there for yourself. You know? And I'm put in this position. Nobody else is put in this position. In my life, in my experience, I am the only one put in this position. So that kind of got to me, and we was just conversating about that, and I'm just like, you know, it's it's just, it's sad, and it's, 
it's an unfortunate situation, you know? People try to relate and they try to talk you back up, talking about, yeah, well, this person going through that, this person going through that, we going through this, I'm the only one. You know, they try to relate and compare the situations, but at the same time, all you can do is focus on your situation because you're the victim. You know, you're the one that's holding it together when you really don't want to. You know, you have no other choice but to hold it together. Have no other choice, you know? So, yeah, um... So then I said, I, I just got closure from it, you know. I spoke on, you know, um, the fact that people don't care about you. A lot of people turn to the Bible and a lot of people turn to God because they are missing that type of compassion. They're missing that, um, they're missing that peace in their life where no one cares about them. And they feel like this is where they have to lean towards because no one cares. You know, and I was like, can you just sit with that? You know, can you just sit with the fact that nobody actually cares? These people don't care about you. And it's it's a, a sad, it's really sad and disappointing. You know, when you have no one and it's just you. But yet you have everyone. But then again, it's just you. So, like I said, people are and can be just like cancer, can be just like um, tumors, freaking tumors in your mind, you know? Tumors just sitting there, you know, absorbing and consuming every bit of your life if you don't fight back. And that's what it is. It's just like cancer. It's just like a situation with cancer. You know, you're dealing with these people and you think these people don't have much effect. You know, but at the same time, they do have the effect, and you're aware that they have this effect on you, and you have to treat it like cancer, and that's how I feel like every day, every single day, to be honest, I feel like I'm fighting cancer. You know, I feel like these people is giving me tumors, you know, and life is just like that. It's just like that cancer person, that cancer survivor. You know, we got to fight back. We got to fight through all of this. Because if you don't, they will stay on your mind like a tumor. They will be sitting there in your body like a tumor, absorbing your life, absorbing all of your energy, absorbing all of you. And this is how, and this is why we have to fight back. We have to fight back. Because if we don't, you know... The cancer will win. <laughs>